Hello, I'm Maddie Harland. I'm at Oxford Wheel Farming Conference 2019. I'm delighted to be with Hugh Warwick, who is the spokesperson of the British Hedgehog Preservation Society. So we all love hedgehogs. Uh, you know, we've grown up, uh, I'm a Beatrix Potter baby, so we've all grown up with that affection for this lovely, beautiful British mammal. But we know that they're in they're having a huge decline, population decline. Tell us a little bit about the sad stuff, first of all. Well, I suppose you start with the positive, which is a bit about you know, people loving hedgehogs. And actually, you know, genuinely, we do. And every poll there is, the hedgehog wins as the nation's favourite animal, favourite nature icon, all of these things. The hedgehog is always coming way out on top. And you begin to wonder, when we, we, we spend our time being concerned about the state of elephants and rhinos and, and lions and tigers in far off and exotic places and populations declining, um, yet our favourite animal is a population which is possibly down by over 95% since the end of the Second World War. That figure is conjectural, it's a bit of a guess. What we do know is that since just the turn of the century, since the year 2000, the population of hedgehogs in urban areas is down by about a third. And in rural areas, it's down by over a half, just in that 17 years' worth of data. And that is absolutely catastrophic. So I always look, like to put it in that context. You know, we get worried about uh, um, these exotic creatures disappearing yes. you know, from exotic places, yet our favourite animal in this country is slipping through our fingers. And um, so the obvious question is why? Okay. okay, but it is. It is obviously it's down to the way we manage the land. And the, the problems for hedgehogs in urban areas and rural areas are slightly different. Mm. But they come down to a bunch of fairly similar themes. Uh, a loss of habitat, a loss of food, and a fragmentation of the remaining habitat. So the remaining habitat gets chopped up into two smaller pieces for them to be able to survive. Now we've, we, do the, we try and base all our work on science, which is why we tend not to go with the more hyperbolic statements about a sudden extinction of hedgehogs in 10 years, because the science doesn't show that. Uh, what the science does show, though, is that for a viable population of hedgehogs, so that's one which can keep on going in, you know, for 100 generations, uh, you need a starting population in an urban area of the very best habitat, of about 30 hedgehogs, but they need at least 90 hectares nearly a square kilometre of unfragmented landscape. And that means no busy roads, no major fences, no major walls, no canals running through that area. And you begin to think, well, where are we finding those areas? There are very few patches that big in urban areas. And then you look at the rural setting. Because uh, the landscape is largely ecologically very degraded, there isn't much food out there. And so actually, suddenly you need 100 hedgehogs and five square kilometres of unfragmented landscape before you can get a viable population. Then you see why it is being fragmented, why it is tumbling down so much. And we also have to... We have to mention the B word because without that it's incomplete. There is a complicated relationship between badgers and hedgehogs. Mm. And I always know that I'm getting an interview about right if at the end of it I've got farmers shouting at me and I've got badger lovers shouting at me. As long as everybody's shouting at me, I know I'm just about right. Um, badgers do eat hedgehogs. That is incontrovertible. Mm. And we also know that when you have a high density of badgers, you have a low density of hedgehogs. But it is complicated. Mm. And, um, and what that means is they're both competitors for the same food. Yeah. The main diet of both badgers and hedgehogs are worms yeah. and other macroinvertebrates. And when the soil does not contain the food of these creatures, their relationship shifts from being one of competition to one of predation. In, 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 in advance of that, also, we have the problem that the presence of badgers fragments the landscape. So an active badger set or a tree down a hedgerow will stop the hedgehogs passing. Mm. It, they'll come back. They'll end up being fragmented as if they were surrounded by a ring road. You know, you'll end up, so if your hedges are thin, if your hedges are minimal, then the only paths the hedgehogs have got, because they are edge hogs, they are edge stations, their name is not a myth, you know, mm. it's not a magical thing, it's a, mm. they're hedge hogs. So they will aim for the edge feature, get to a badger set, they'll come back. So yeah, it's like being surrounded by a moat. You, know, you end up creating an island of good hedgehoginess around a village, and then they're stuck and they can't move between the places. It's as effective as um, a bunch of gardens surrounded by a motorway. You know, that is the way the hedgehog population declines. So roads are something that we can't have an impact on particularly. Um, impermeable head, um, fences are, so one of the, the um, strategies is to not have impermeable fences to allow gaps. 
what else can we do to boost hedgehog Well, actually, it's just the fencing thing. It's not just about having gaps. It's, we can just simply make a hole. You can retrofit your yes, fence exactly. with the concrete gravel board, the kickboard. Just put in a little hole. Size of a CD case um, mm. for, for your younger viewers. Um, that's about um, 10 iPhones stacked on top of each other. Okay. Right. <laughs> In fact, people have forgotten how big CD cases are. Yeah. 13 centimetres square. Okay. Um, and a small hole like that in the bottom of a concrete gravel board, just one on each side of your fence. Mm -hmm. And I have launched a petition through change.org. And it's, um, uh, they asked me, what can we do? And I said, well, how about we make sure all new build developments have to have just a small hole. The thing with these petitions is, uh, you know, how do we save hedgehogs? Well, we dismantle industrial um, capitalism. That's not going to work, as if we're going to sort of approach a minister and say, well, what we need to do is save hedgehogs by you know, dismantling mm -hmm. industrial capitalism. But what we can do is say, we can help the permeability of a landscape yeah. by making these small holes. I hoped to get 10,000 signatures on this change.org petition. When I last looked, it was at 431,000. We're aiming for half a million. And Michael Gove was here yesterday, and because I'm a bushy little so-and-so, I did a little walk and talk with him because his mind has left a brief gap. And I pointed out to him, I'm going to be turning up with half a million signatures on his desk. So this is what we need to do. Him and Kit Moltaz, the planning uh, minister, we're going to get this change made. So it's a small change. Mm. We can actually all do it ourselves. Make sure there's a hole. Yeah. Talk to your neighbours. But then the best part of it is you, talk to, you get your neighbours to talk to their neighbours. And their neighbours talk to their yeah, neighbours. Exactly. And you end up creating a hedgehog street. And once you've done that, you've made friends actually, because people will bond over hedgehogs. You've got a hedgehog street, you have a hedgehog street party. Hedgehog bunting has become quite a thing. Yes. Okay. People like to feed hedgehogs. What, what do you advise? Hedgehogs are carnivores. Yeah. I mean, that's their, uh, I mean they, they will eat all sorts of bits and pieces uh, by a sort of accident or whatever, but they are principally carnivores. They need meat. The cheapest solution is meaty pet food. Um, you can, if you go online, you can have a look for hedgehog feeding station design. Yeah. You can put the food out in such a way that it won't become eaten by foxes and dogs and, and cats. And you can reduce the chances of rats getting it as well. Um, or you can use dried food as well. All sorts of different options available. Lots of information online. The British Hedgehog Preservation Society website, loads of information. Okay. Everything from what to feed a hedgehog through to what to do if you find a hedgehog out in daytime. Uh, because on the whole, they're, can't, they're, they're very much a, a nocturnal species. Daytime hedgehogs, especially if they're sunbathing, they don't sunbathe. Especially mm. if they're looking drunk, they don't get drunk. Those are signs of hypothermia, they're signs of um, imminent demise. You can intervene. Get in touch with the British Hedgehog Preservation Society and you will find on their website a phone number that will give you a direct lead into the nearest hedgehog rescue centre. Take your injured hedgehog along, get it fixed up, get it released back in your garden. Okay, thanks very much. It's an absolute fascinating. <laughs>